Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Big Muddy Catfishing, where we are teaching you how to make a bank pole. First of all, you need to go to Walmart and get you some string, and you need to choose your string. Now I'm going to help you pick your string because this is why. 216 and it's 119 string. As you can see, it says it's only a 113 pound test. You get some of this string right here. 113 pound test. Now I don't use those. When I make my bank poles, I use real big tough string. This is the string I use. This is tarred nylon set line, 235 pound test. And plus when you use this string, it does not unravel in the water. If it does, it's because you've had it wet for a bunch of days in a row, but that's the only reason why that tarred string, this other string, all unravels in the water. So that's a good way to lose your fish to even start. So as you can see, it might be cheap, but cheap's not always the way to go. Plus for 866 for this brand, it's not bad. And plus it lasts a long time. I bought mine two years ago and I still have mine left. Now, if you're not going to your local tackle shop to get hooks, these are the type of hooks you might want to get. As you can see, that's Team Catfish, real catfish gear, dot double action circle hooks. And if you're not a circle hook fan, there are also bait hooks. Now, if you go to your local tackle shop, you might be able to find bigger hooks than this, but as far as Walmart, you're only going to get about dot. That's about as how big as you're going to get. And so that's where you get your line, and you can get your hooks also from here. Now your sinkers. Let's show you the sinkers. Hold on just a second. Now if you're looking for sinkers, you can get... These are like... Eagle Claw Egg Sinkers. One to two ounce. Or one to one and a half ounce. You only want to use these in little to no current because if you've got a place where you're at where there's a lot of current, these will not work. They will not hold your bait underneath the water. That's why I don't use these on mine. I went to the bait shop and I use six to eight ounce sinkers because I'm fishing in the Missouri River. Now, like, you, like I said, you have your options for different types of hooks. I've seen guys use... Use Eagle Claw treble hooks on their stuff. Also, Eagle Claw does have a circle C hook, but that is a six aught. And that's pretty much what you need to start out your bank pole. You need the next item that you'll need is your actual PVC piping and some uh, closed eye bolts which I have that at the house I will show you. Um, you can get your PVC piping for $2.99 at your local Ace Hardware, depending on where you're at, and you need 10 foot of that. I cut it down to eight foot, and I cut it in a 45 degree angle so I can stab that into the bank. And I will tie my tarred line off of the eye bolt. So next we'll go back home and we'll go ahead and we'll build this pole. But just like I said, you need use some egg sinkers. You can get those from Walmart or your local tackle shop. If you're in heavy current water, I suggest you get anywhere from six to eight ounces. 
Otherwise, if you're in just a little bitty creek, those will work. And also, I have used bank sinkers on some of my uh, bank poles. And you'll see that when we're at in my lab. But keep on watching. We'll show you the rest of it. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Like I said, had to be a little bit quiet at Walmart. Quite busy. So we're back home, and we're going to show you real quick how to make a bank pole. Tonight, I'm going out to set some poles with some goldfish. So keep in mind, watch out for that video. But one of the first things you need, cheap. You can start with a smaller bank pole. You can also get a three-quarter inch bank pole or three-quarter inch PVC. This is a half-inch PVC. You can get this from Ace Hardware for about $2.99 for a 10-foot piece of rod. Now I'm going to lay it down here. Now all the other items you need, you're going to need a tape measure. And a marker, a sinker, a swivel, hooks, a line, and a black and decker drill. <laughs> now what I'm doing here. First, we're going to measure off. This is how I do them. So just keep in mind, this is my way. I start out at the end. And I measure down two feet. Now cut. That's my line for cutting. I make mine in eight foot poles. Also, you need your saw. Now, when you're sawing, I'm hand sawing this. You want to saw the end of your pole into a 45 degree angle. That way, your pole can stick into banks. Keep in mind, a hollow PVC will not stick into clay very well. It doesn't hammer in very well. I've tried it. it you will crack your pole. So, keep in mind where you're sticking these. Otherwise, you need to find something to put in the middle of this down here, like rebar. And then you can reinforce that. So, like I said, I'm cutting an angle. Probably not the safest way, but I don't have much to work with. Now, this ain't got to be perfect. These are your own personal bank posts. Bam, as you can see, 45 degree angle. That way, when you want to stick it in the bank, you can jam that into a nice muddy bank pretty easy. All right, so now you got your pole. Now your pole's ready for the rest of the stuff. When you go to your lo local hardware shop, make sure you get a cap for the end of your pole. Put your cap on. I have a drill. I have a screw that has a tap on the end, so it will start a hole. And I'm gonna try to drill this hole. Keep in mind, guys, that there's easier ways to do this, but I don't have a lot of stuff. Got my weight on it, holding it down. Get you a hole started. As y'all can see, the 
that away. Got my hole in there. All right. Now next, take my eye bolt screw. You get that from Ace Hardware screw eyes. These are some I have laying around. I would suggest that you get a thicker metal piece of eye bolt because as you catfish, if you get a big one, it will bend that out. Now, since I started my hole, I will take this eye bolt and I'll screw it in there. It's pretty snug. Normally, I don't drive the hole all the way through. I start it. That way, this eye bolt you, screws in itself. Pretty easy, and the eye bolt stays stuck. If you see those over there, those are the way I have one, and the eye bolt won't spin. But as you can see right here, the eye bolt will spin, but that's not a problem for now. I said we're just showing you how to bend it. So when you do your drill and you drill your hole, do not go all the way through the PVC pipe. St just start your hole so you can drive your eye bolt screw in yourself. Now, I was showing you at Walmart. I used that, that real tough test, that tarred string. This is that tarred string. This is your other option at Walmart. This might be good for channel cats, but this is not going to catch monsters. And if you see this, when it gets wet, it easily unravels. That, like Just like that. When you get it out of the water, I've come back to my bank poles unraveling. So, it looks nice and pretty because it's nice and green or the orange kind or the white kind. But like I said, you'll lose fish that way. If you're going to go cheap, just go ahead and buy the big thing of tarred string. That way it lasts you through a couple seasons. Now, I told you, uh, I can find where my swivel went. Okay, I get these nice, big, hefty swing swivels from <laughs> my local tackle shop, Tombstone Tackle. As you can see, these are 600-pound tests. And if you want to know why I get those, these are Eagle Claw swivels from Walmart. And I got 100-plus beast out there, and this is what he did to an Eagle Claw Civil. That's what it's supposed to look like, and that's what he did to it. So if you're looking for monsters that weigh a lot and they're big, do not use the Eagle Claw Swivels because they cannot hold up. That's what he done. Also, the Snap Swivels, that same area that I fish, he's done that to a Snap Swivel and also started stretching those out. So where I fish, guys, there's some really big monsters. So if you want to go big, make sure your equipment's working. Now, I tied my knot on here. I just run a simple fisherman's knot. All you do is wrapping it around. And then back it back through this loop. I tighten that down. As you can see, it's simple. It doesn't take me no time to do. I run this string all the way down the length of the line. And then, go in the house. She's out here taking go in. And then you go. And you go back up. Okay, guys, when I go, I go down the length of this pole, back up, and back down. So I, when you do your string, do three lengths of this pole. So this pole is eight feet. 
So eight times three is 24. So 24 feet of line. I'm not gonna do all that right now because like I said, I've already made a bunch of these but I'm just showing you guys that 24 feet of line, you wanna cut that line. Like so. You take your egg sinker and you run your egg sinker, you run that, thread that through. And then I tie a fisherman's knot onto my swivel. It's a, with this tarred string, it's a little hard to do. I like polymer knots, which I'll show you in another video, but it's hard to do it with these, uh, this tarred string from Walmart. So, because that tarred string is really tough. So we lock that down. That's secure. Now we have our sinker on a line. Now we pull a hook out. It wants to come out. This is a 10 knot circle hook, also from Tombstone, as you can see. Now, what you want to do is you want to pull you off about mm, about a foot, foot and a half, maybe even two feet of leader line. Cut some of that off. Now the way I like to do it is I like to snail, snail these hooks. So you run the string through the back. And then you twist. I go from the, there's a, I call it the non-open side, the barred side, not the side where they bent it, just in case it bends out. And then I go around a couple of times. Say four times on that. And then back, run the string back through. Boom. Snell knot. It's that simple, guys. Lines your hook up with the line. That way, it's easy to catch your bait. Now, like I said, I've run another fisherman's knot. Through here. Pretty simple. Run it back through the loop. Lock it in. And there you go, guys. As you can see, didn't take much time. If you're in a quick hurry trying to get out on the river, take that, wrap it around. There you go. You can use your eyeball to hook your hook in. Just like that, guys. Bam, you got a bank pole. That quick, guys, you go out and get you a catfish. Get you a decent size one. You go in the bank. You jam it into the bank. You take you a rubber mallet. You hammer that in. Get it in about two feet in the bank. It should be about a 45 degree angle. You unwind your line real quick. Drop that down. I like to get my sinker just underneath the water. So the only thing that you have underneath the water is the sinker and the leader line. Drop that down. Where every time the fish comes up, it breaks water, makes a lot of splashing noise that attracts your catfish. And that, my friend, is how you make a bank pole and get you a catfish. Check me out, Big Muddy Catfishing with Bank Pole Joe. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a good day.